Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to move on into chapter two, all about maps and some of the new geographic technologies involved in cartography, geographic information systems, global positioning systems, and remote sensing. I, I used to collect these uh, antique maps. I always used to get a a calendar every year that had these. Antique maps are kind of interesting from a historical perspective, but we won't be doing much with those in this course. A good place to start is defining the term map. Uh, what is a map? And I want to provide a definition that would fit for all kinds of maps. Well, simply put, a map is a graphical device that portrays spatial information. All right, now you've used graphical devices before. How about pie, pie charts and uh, line graphs and uh, bar charts and so forth? Those are graphical devices, right? You might make those in a program like Excel. But they're not maps, though, of course, because they're not showing information spatially. Another thing about a map is that, well, they're not a... A perfect representation of the earth it's not a it's not a picture it doesn't try to be usually but a map is an abstraction of a particular concept for some part of the earth and also the great thing about maps is the map is the primary tool for spatial analysis all right so a map is a graphical device portrays spatial information then it's a map So what's cartography? Well, cartography is the art and science and technology involved in map making. Cartography is map making. Here's a very interesting looking um, device. This is uh, the Pacific Islanders stick and shell chart. Uh, this information is not in your textbook, but I put it in the, the online notes, and here you are. Um, here with these, the Pacific Island peoples, it's amazing that the Pacific is even populated because the, the, the major island groups even, they're separated by uh, vast distances of hundreds, even thousands of miles, and it is populated, and they did it. The, the native peoples of the Pacific were able to do it without using maps. Well, they had these things, the stick and shell chart, and what is it exactly? Well, you have these conch shells that show where the major islands or the major islands groups are. Those are the shells. What about the sticks, the, the bamboo sticks? What are they there for? Well, the sticks are there to hold up the shells then, aren't they? But uh, now I don't know how to read this because I'm not a Pacific Island navigator, but supposedly the arrangement of the sticks says something about wind and water currents at particular times of year. So they, they had these devices and so they, they used them as maps. Now, Devil's Advocate uh, says that these things really weren't used for navigation all that much. They're just a, a general representation. And they, they used other things to help them navigate from one island to another. Astronomy, navigating by the stars, and, and so forth. I've included a, a link for a good TED-Ed that showed how these uh, ancient peoples crossed vast expanse of ocean not being not being able to utilize maps oh well my question is it's a it's a graphical device and it portrays spatial information right so does that mean it's a map well, in, a, in a way it is uh, in the first lecture for chapter one we, we talked about how the physician John Snow's uh, map of the cholera outbreak in London was a good example of using spatial analysis, so I, I won't spend much time on that. Well, this the stick and shell chart is a map. So does a map have to be on paper? 
Uh, well, these days uh, with technology, you know, most maps that are made are never actually printed out. Okay. All right. So, yeah, increasingly we have maps that are on our computer devices, cell phones, and other things. And it's becoming increasingly common to have mapped information on these devices. One of the, the terms in the textbook is mashups. Okay, these uh, hastily put together uh, maps from a variety of different data sources uh, that are, are kind of mashed all together, put all together on the, on the same chart. Uh, they're called a, a mashup. Maybe put some push pins in there with some names of cities or some other phenomena and so forth, which not a whole lot of thought is put into this. So many of these are cartographically unappealing. I look at this and I'm cringing because I can see they use the wrong map projection here. Well, uh, cartography is... Cartography is not done with, with pen and ink so much anymore. It's almost all done with computer. I'm old enough that when I had a, a course called Introduction to Cartography, we actually drew maps. Uh, uh, we, we had drafting tables, we had light tables, we had mylar sheets that we would put down and India ink, and we would cut out symbols uh, on, uh, on the sticky symbols of uh, vinyl symbols and we would uh, cut them out with exacto knives which is always dangerous and stick them on and so forth uh, that was the old-fashioned the conventional hand-drawn cartography but these days though almost every map that's going to be published is usually made on some type of computer system maybe perhaps some type of engineering or CAD system but pretty much most maps are are made with a computer. Uh, the exception to that, I, I think, is that back in my uh, in in my youth and in college, that, that sometimes we would make a quick and dirty map on a cocktail napkin when we were closing closing down one party and we're going to go to another one. We'd make a hastily drawn map with a, with an ink pen and a cocktail map napkin. Uh, that is an art and a science that is now lost. All right, so now it's, it's almost all computer cartography. Well, is computer cartography synonymous with geographic information systems? We'll talk about geographic information systems a little later in this chapter. Well, uh, uh, you may have a computer draw you a map, so that's computer cartography, but unless it's a smart map, uh, un un unless it is a, a map that one item on the map knows about other items on the map and you can query and display different data, then it's not a geographic information systems. Yeah, yeah you could make a map with a computer. You, you, could, you could draw a map with Microsoft Paint, but the, the data wouldn't be integrated. Uh, you, you need a, a geographic information system in order to do serious uh, analysis and geography. I can see in this computer lab, this GIS lab, they, uh, they're allowed to have pizza. Well, what are some of the maps that are used in our everyday life? All right. Uh, well, we have road maps, although increasingly the road map isn't a folded up map that you get from AAA. Uh, road map is something that you have on your, your cell phone. Weather maps, you should take a look at the weather map every day. Look at the H's and the L's and the, the line of blue triangles and so forth. Uh, various types of reference maps, uh, topographic maps that give you the lay of the, the land. Uh, say if you like outdoor sports, hunting and backpacking and so forth, you probably want to uh, have a topographic map with you. And if your device can't get an electronic signal, <laughs> signal, uh, you better have a, a backup paper map in there. Various types of nautical charts as, as well uh, that have the features of the uh, what's at sea, the, the depths of the water and so forth. And you might even say that various plats and plans and blueprints of buildings and so forth they are actually a, a type of map that's also worked on as as well 
So those are our commonly utilized maps in our everyday life. What's a thematic map, though? The, uh, thematic maps or theme maps are, are maps that are simplified to show one or more themes. And these are the ones that you have in the textbooks and the atlases and some of the wall charts are, are also thematic maps as well. We'll, we'll take a look at these in, in depth in a bit. Yeah, here's some examples of, say, uh, plats and plans of, uh, say, uh, a, a new suburban uh, subdivision and so forth. Or utilities, they use a number of plans as well. They need to know where the, where the underground wires are. All right, so it, these people that use these types of maps in their everyday lives, they, they probably don't refer to them as maps. They, they don't know that they're doing geography. Right, the, the maps used in geography textbooks are called thematic maps. I have an exercise for you where I, I, I want you to find me a good example of a thematic map and, and talk about it. And these are some example theme maps that have been submitted by students in the past, so don't use these same exact ones. All right, for example here, all right, this is a, a typical example of a thematic map that you might have in, in some type of agricultural report, perhaps for some type of government agency where they're distributing this information to farmers. All right, so, uh, right, the, the, it's not used for navigation. All right, and that's not the purpose of the map. The, the purpose is to show one or more themes. In this case, it's sheep and land production. All right, so here the, the cartographer has to take all this data about um, sheep and lambs and it has to portray them somehow. Now, they, they, they used a good thematic technique here. This is what's called dot density. One dot, one dot represents 2,000 sheep and land. And I can, looking here in the, the southern quarter of the United States, you, you know, it seems that most southerners don't eat a a whole lot of lamb in, in comparison to other parts of the of the country not raising a lot of a lot a lot of lamb well one dot equals two thousand sheep well who makes that decision the cartographer does uh, it, meaning you know how many sheep are represented by one dot and how how big do you make the dot if you make the dot too big they're all going to overlap with each other and you can't see the trend and if you make the dots too small too small a point then you're not going to be able to see the trend. So the the cartographer has to make decisions like that. Right, this is a good example of a of a dot density map. Very straightforward. It it immediately shows its theme. Uh, how about this one? Employment and healthcare. Yeah, you might see something like this in some type of um, governmental agency report. So it's what percentage of the uh, of the workforce is engaged in the healthcare industry, and it really pulls out that in the northeastern states that a, a very large percentage of the population is of the employed population is engaged in the healthcare sector here's some other examples here here's a soil moisture zone map that you might have hanging around the the the, the local county agent soil conservation service office here's a thematic map, but this would probably be used by a professional. This is a, a, a real estate property map that shows a distinction between uh, the, the properties that are available for sale and the properties that aren't. Um, let's see, what this one's a thematic map. It's the exclusive economic zone of Australia. Well, where's all the cities in Australia? They don't show it. Well, that's not important. The important thing here is this maritime border around Australia that shows that 200 kilometers off of their coast, they control the uh, all the, the legal fishing and mineral rights and, and so forth. So that's the that's the purpose of it. You might see this in a, an online news journal and so forth, where there may be some changes in the, the, the laws of, of the seas there. And this one, the percent change uh, there's nothing wrong with the students submitting this. It's good that they did that. But it's probably an example of bad cartography. There's percent population change in the United States and 
this is unappealing to me because it, it mixes the the warm versus the cool colors usually you need to have some type of gradient with with that all right we'll take a look at some more of those but those are all good examples of thematic maps well thematic maps are simplified to show a theme although sometimes the themes can be rather complex as you as you see on this one that 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 shows you uh what should you be wearing what pr pr proportion of the year so you're going to be wearing shorts a lot more often in florida as opposed to up in the upper peninsula of michigan so sometimes yeah thematic maps are simplified to show one or more themes but they can still be used for analysis though and sometimes they are complex Let's take a look at the components of a typical map, a, a typical thematic map. Well, a theme map has to have some type of data. Uh, a theme map usually has to have a, a title, lets you know what, what you're looking at. Uh, it has to have something on there that tells you what the symbols represent. That's the legend, usually down in the corner, that shows you what the, what, what the various colors and other symbols mean. Now, if you're in education, you, you'll see that the, they use the word key in elementary school and then middle school higher they always use the word legend it has to have some type of orientation on their north arrow various types of symbols there's almost an infinite number of ways to symbolize data and uh, typography which means the the writing on the map the lettering on the map now whenever i talk about typography i always have to tell the story of about a student that i had about 10 years ago it's getting to be a, a rather old story now. But uh, I, one time I had the student in this class, and she was a, an older student, a non-traditional age student that was older. She was going back and starting college for the first time, and uh, she wanted to get a degree, which was great. She was one of my favorite students because she often participated and she often asked a, a lot of questions. One time she came up to me after class very hesitantly, and, and she said this to me. She said, Professor Edgel, I didn't want to embarrass you in front of the, the, the class, so I'm going to ask you this question in, in private. Uh, here's what she asked. She said, I saw that there was a big mistake on the classroom map. And the way I, what I was thinking was, well, you know, I like bloopers. Sometimes there's a learning experience, a teaching moment with a blooper. So I asked her, what's, what's the big mistake on the classroom map? Which, which looks something like uh, this map, by the way. So I'm going to point to this. She, this is what she told me. She said, your map shows Washington, D.C. out in the ocean. And so I told her, well, oh, uh, well, that, that's not Washington, D.C. That's the label for Washington, D.C. You see, there's a point that's on the land, and that's where the city is, is located. And then you have to put the label on there. And that's the thing. You know, the labels, where, where do you put the label? You have to put the label where, where things are, are not in the way. So I didn't mind her question about that it was actually a, a good question you have because i'm wondering with all this mapped information that we have on devices and cell phones and so forth are people actually seeing what they're supposed to see you know if you have one of the cell phone maps and you're using it when you when you zoom in you get a lot more street labels and then you, when you zoom out you have fewer street labels there but the information is all in there who makes the choice of what's more important than than something else when you zoom in it gets labeled when you when you when, when you zoom out it would be too cluttered to have all those labels so typography is a is a non-trivial thing well what is it that all true maps have to have all true maps be they a thematic map if they are a real map they have to be scale drawings they have to be projected in some ways. Don't worry, that's a whole big topic. I'm going to talk about that. They have to have scale and projection, and they have to have some type of coordinate system as well in order to be a, a true map. 
Oh, let's see, here's an example of a coordinate system. Say you had a, a road map that you rolled out and you were wondering, where can I find Cleveland? I'm looking for Cleveland on this map. And so you ask your, your friend, can you find Cleveland on this map? And they look and, and they go, well, let's see, it's in Cleveland. It says on the index that Cleveland's in G3. So, so look in G3. What, well, what does that mean? What's G3? Well, okay, that means column G, actually into the suburbs, and row three, then, that, oh, that's where, look, look in there and you'll find Cleveland somewhere within there. All right, so that's the type of coordinate system. Of course, the real roadmaps were, were a lot more complicated than that. Okay, another type of coordinate system is the rank and file of a, a chessboard. Uh, usually I ask a student in the front row, what's your best move? And so I ask, well, let's see, can you, uh, can this piece here, can it go from G2 to G4? Sure. And how about this one? Can, can this piece go from B1 to B3? Yes. Well, uh, one way to, to talk about chess moves, and you, you, know, you might not have to have a board in pieces, is if you had the coordinate system, uh, you could talk about where every piece would go. Here's another coordinate system probably you're somewhat familiar with if you're taking a mathematics class. Have you ever heard of a the Cartesian coordinate system? Well, Cartesian, that's like cartography. That's like mapping, isn't it? It's named after René Descartes is part of the story. So it's a coordinate system, right? As, as you know, you have your X and Y coordinates. So where are you on the X axis? And where are you on the Y axis? So for example, this point here is at is at point 611. All right, so 6 over on the x-axis, 11 up on the y-axis. That's its coordinate pair. Now, what if you if you just use the, the positive, where all the numbers are positive here, uh, the, the, the positive quadrant, and, uh, and, and put a map under there, say a, 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 a map of the classroom or a map of UNC Pembroke, uh, you laid it out there, you know, wouldn't you be able to, have, you'd have a coordinate system, right? You'd be able to locate the X and Y coordinates of all the buildings. All right, that's, that's another way of, of doing it. But the main coordinate system that's used in geography is the system of latitude and longitude. The parallels of latitude and the meridians of longitude which I will start with in the next part of lecture.